Hi Booktube, Lynette here and in today's video I'm going to talk about my reading plans for March. Uh, so as always uh, my TBR is not set in stone. Um, there are only two books this month that I absolutely have to read to get through and those are the book club picks for the month. The first pick for the month of March is the Cozy Book Co uh, Club and we have picked A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. Now I did look at what this book was about when I uh, voted for it <laughs> back at the beginning of the year um, but I didn't I don't actually remember. All I know is it's about a young woman in Edwardian society. It's split across Italy and England. Uh, it's a bit of a romance. I understand it's a bit humorous as well, a bit of a humorous take on society at that time. Um, but yeah, that's all I really remember what it was about. So I'm looking forward to discovering this. It is a classic because it was written in the very early 1900s. So I'm hoping that this will count towards my one classic for this year. Um, I haven't attempted to read a classic for a couple of years. So maybe this is the year that I find one that actually keeps me intrigued. The second book club I'm a part of is a literature club. And this month we're reading Throttled by Lauren Asher. This is book one of her Dirty Air series. This is set in the world of Formula One. Um, I enjoy watching Formula One, so uh, books set in that world, especially romances, um, I do find uh, enjoyable reads. Um, not that I've read many, I think I've only read two. This will be my third. Um, but this is about Maya, whose uh, brother is a Formula One driver and she spends uh, part of the season with him. Um, she strikes up communication I'll say to start with with one of her brother's race rivals and it, it is actually a real rivalry it's not a rivalry on the track uh, friendship off um, it is rivalry on and off the track so uh, her brother would not be happy that she's getting involved with another driver called Noah this is their romance it's supposed to be a bit of a steamy romance so yeah, I like my romance to be a bit uh, warm, let's put it that way. Um, so I'm looking forward to picking this up. I have actually started it. I started it last year um, and I put it down again. Um, so I'm hoping that when I pick it up um, that I will actually find the will to carry on this time around because it was just a bit of a mediocre read initially. Uh, but I have read a couple of other books by this author since and... Uh, I have enjoyed what I've read otherwise, so maybe that will give me the momentum to keep on going this time round. And then that's it. That's where my month is not really set in stone. Um, Steph, who runs the Clitcher Club, she runs another book group called the Final Book Support Group. That is for those of us who are serial series starters, but not serial series finishers. Uh, so it's meant to help and encourage us to get on with reading those books that we've been putting off for a while and finishing series that we've been putting off for a while as well. Uh, Steph um, is runs it, she runs it every other month and normally she does maybe a weekend or maybe a week. Uh, for the month of March she is running a month long readathon which I am really pleased about because in previous months of doing this uh, instead of just sticking to the week or the weekend that Steph has, has done this for, I have actually spread it out to the whole of the month. And she's really kept me on track um, and some of my success uh, with series, which you will have seen in my previous video because that is up now. Uh, my series uh, update is up on the channel. Um, it, it was partially inspired by Steph uh, and the Final Book Support Group. Uh, because this is a month long readathon, Steph has decided to try and help us along a bit more and she has set up uh, four groups um, that you can pick one of the groups to belong to and there are prompts in those groups to help you with picking your books. Uh, because um, she has kind of a, a camp theme, 
um, camping theme to the Final Book Support Group, uh, mainly because we camp out and read books, uh, you know, we, we cosy up and read books. Uh, she decided to kind of theme the readathon on that basis. So what she's done is uh, she set up four groups and she's given them names and she's given them cabin names. So if you went, um, I don't know if any of you did this, but uh, if you went camping um, or some kind of uh, holiday with school where you were put into specific groups, it, it's that type of thing. I did. We were put into a cabin. We gave ourselves a name. Steph has named us. Um, I'm going to go through them all. Uh, so if you want to join in, then you can. Uh, I will try and leave a link down below to uh, Steph's page and all the graphics, the, the Final Book Support Group Instagram where all the graphics are, but I will also try and put the graphics up here for you. There, so like I say, there are four groups in total. Every group, the first prompt in every group is read a final book. Quite simple, pick up a book that's a final book in a series or a book that catches you up in a series if you don't have any final books to read or none of them take your fancy right now. Uh, but yes, that is the first prompt. So the other prompts are for Bear's Claw uh, is use a colour wheel to pick a book to read off of your TBR. Um, so just go online, find a random colour wheel randomizer, spin it, let it select your, your book colour. It doesn't have to be the whole colour, so if it comes up with blue, um, even if there's just a tiny smidge of blue on the cover, if that counts for you, that counts for you. There is no, no one's going to police this. No one's going to um, say that you're doing anything wrong. It You just have to make it fit for you. Uh, the second uh, prompt for this is to read a book with a light cover. Um, so as light as you want it to be, white, blue, cream, pale green, pastels, you know, any shade of light that takes your fancy. The third prompt is to read a big book. And this is a book that is 500 plus pages or as you know near to 500 as you can get, depending on what's on your TBR. Again, other than that, just needs to be a big book. Um, and I know we've got quite a few of those between us on our uh, TBR lists. In every group, there is a prompt that is nothing to do with reading at all. You can make it fit reading if you want to, but you don't have to. And for Bear's Claw, the prompt is to just get up and go for a walk. Even if all you do is just walk to uh, the local shop and back. If you've gone for a walk, do it. If you listen to your audio, listen to an audiobook while you're doing it, even better. You could go and do what I do. I mean, I do a 10k walk every Sunday morning with a friend of mine. That would count. It doesn't matter how short or long your walk is. Just get up and go outside. And the final prompt is something dark and dangerous. Now, this could be the content. This could be a character. This could be the cover. It could mean anything you want it to mean. Um, but read something that encompasses that theme of dark and dangerous. The second is Wolf's Tooth. Um, so again, find, read a final book. Their first prompt other than that is to uh, use a random number generator. So number your TBR, um, find a number randomizer um, on the internet, put in your number range that you've got to pick from and let it pick a number for you and pick your book. The second prompt, read a book with a dark cover. So again, it could be a nighttime scene. It could be dark colours, black, browns, dark blues, purples, how, whatever fits for you for a dark cover. Third prompt is to read a small book. Uh, so I think she said anything under 300, maybe 250 pages around that mark or less. That's a small book. Again, if it's a final book or a continuation, entirely up to you. The non-reading prompt is to make some smalls. Um, if you don't have the uh, snack, that snack or if you're not able to make smalls, just cozy up with any cozy snack of your choice. And then the final one is uh, the theme of something wild and dangerous. Again, it could be on the cover. There might be a, a wild animal on the cover. Um, it could be... Um, part of the story but anything you want that's wild and adventurous I think I said dangerous just now I meant adventurous the third group is stag's antler 
and for this we have to use an emoji generator to help you with your book and whatever emoji comes out you need to apply that to the book that you pick so if it's happy pick a happy book sad pick a sad book angry pick a dangerous book maybe um but however you want to apply that however that it fits for you is all you need to do the cover design is to pick an illustrated cover um so i mean obviously if you read graphic novels mostly those are actually illustrated covers um quite a lot of romance books these days romance series have uh, illustrated style covers uh fantasy um quite often has illustrated style covers uh, so have a look and see what you've got on your shelf that matches that theme the book directive is to read a hardback book uh this isn't an easy one for me to fill but it's as simple as it says read a book that's a hardback the non-book prompt is drink hot chocolate now again this is just a theme you don't have to drink hot chocolate if you don't like it um drink tea drink coffee if you don't like hot drinks drink whatever drink of your choice that you like to snuggle up with when you're reading a book and sit down and drink it and knock that prompt off the the list and the theme prompt is something calm and majestic so again whatever that means to you it could be um i have um a beautiful book uh, on my shelves that has a stag on the front now to me that would be calm and majestic because to me they are uh so again or it could be something that you know is in the story so it could be royalty uh in in the book um whatever whatever you can make fit and then the final uh group is buzzard speak their first prompt is to use a letter generator so again just something to randomize the alphabet and the letter that comes up you need to use that to pick the book the cover design is a typography cover so that's a book that has no picture on it really um is mostly letters and lettering so um the only example i've been able to find or think of for this uh is the twisted love series by anna huang um so yeah but it just just you know the the actual focus is the words and not any picture or background the type of book read a paperback book easy as it says find a paperback book in a series pick it up give it a read the non-bookish prompt is arts and crafts so do some arts and crafts do you paint do you draw do you do cross stitch tapestry make a puzzle anything that's arty or crafty uh, for me, what I was thinking to fill this prompt is my hall is in desperate need of decoration. It has been in a state of 80% wallpaper stripped since the day I moved in because I never got around to finishing it. And at the point I'm filming this video, I am four days shy of having moved in, of being off the year anniversary of having moved in. At the point that you're seeing this, I have been in my home uh, for... 12 months exactly um almost 12 months just just a day or two over 12 months exactly uh since i shut that front door and didn't go back to my mum's apart from lunch on fridays so that's um so it's however you want to make it fit i mean that's art to me i've got to paint it um i've got to fill in holes in the wall um and you know i'm not very good uh at decorating um i still have uh, grey splodges of paint on my white ceiling from when I decorated my living room because I just haven't got around to covering them up and everybody whinges at me about it and you know the more they whinge the less likely I am to do it uh, probably part of the problem with the hall so to me that's arts and crafts now I would probably pair that with listening to an audiobook to get another series out of the way as well so again however you want to make it fit and then the final prompt again is something beautiful and alluring again it's just however you want to make it fit. I can think of some gorgeous covers on my shelves uh, that would absolutely fit that prompt and would easily be uh, another book knocked off of my never-ending list of books I have in series to be read. So now I've told you about all the prompts that Steph has given us this month, let's talk about all the final, all the most up-to-date books that I have on my shelves. I don't have many. I'm certainly not intending to get through all of them. Um, I'm probably only going to get through some of them. And 
to be honest quite a few of these i can't really remember what they're about because they have been on my tbr some of them for quite some time so the first one on the list is times convert by deborah harkness um now this one isn't technically listed as part of her all souls series but it certainly follows on from the end of the original trilogy and it carries on with other characters um like i say it's the most recent to be released i don't know if there are any more coming so this will bring this series right up to date for me um and i really need to get on and read it because it's been hanging around for a while i bought it when it was released um, and I just never picked it up and carried it on once I'd actually finished the original trilogy. So it would be nice to knock this one off the list. The second book on the list is Soul Redeemed by Kerry Lake. This is um, paranormal, supernatural, not quite sure which it falls into. Uh, romance novel, it's dark. Um, the main characters uh, are sons of the demon Roth. Um, and it's how they meet and fall in love with their partners. There's lots of um, different animal and human and human animal variations um, in it. I enjoyed the original three books, the first three books when I read them. And I think I've put this off because I know that the author, this isn't the final book in the series, but the author doesn't really know when she's going to come back to it and finish it. Um, but it would be nice to have it up to date, ready for, for when or if there are more releases in future. The next book on the list is Filthy Beautiful Forever by Kendall Ryan. This is kind of an epilogue story. Romance authors kind of do this. They'll write a trilogy and then they'll write a fourth book, which is follows on for the happy ever after. And you just get a slice of life type thing. And I think this is one of those. Uh, it's been a long time since I read the original trilogy, so I have no idea who the characters are. I might remember as it comes back as I start reading it. Um, if I do, then I will probably carry on with it, but it might actually end up being a DNF as well. The next book is one that I'm embarrassed to say that I have never read because I can't believe I've never read it, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, this book is The Wind Through the Keyhole by Stephen King, and it is the eighth book in the Dark Tower series. Um, now, I believe it's not in times of setting, it's not book eight, uh, but it was released as book eight. Uh, I It was written and released after book eight, uh, book seven. The Dark Tower was released and after I'd read that. So I just need to read this one to finish off the series. Now it's slightly controversial because you may have noted over the last couple of the years that I have started rereading this series. Um, I am discounting the fact that I am rereading this series uh, for this um, because what I'd like to do is I'd like to read The Wind Through the Keyhole now and then what I'd like to do is, because I don't think I've got to the point where this falls in the story timeline, I'd like to go back and then reread -re it in the story timeline. Um, so I'm discounting the fact that I'm already rereading the series. Um, but yes, this will finally, finally stave off the embarrassment that comes every time I see this come up on my list. The next book is uh, one that I've been saying I'm going to read for a couple of months now because I've been raving about this series and this will bring the series up to date. Um, but I'm a little bit scared because it means I've got 12 months to wait before I can read the next one because I have to wait for the next one to come out in paperback before I can pick it up and that isn't going to be until the beginning of next year because the hardback isn't out until later this year but if you haven't already guessed that book is Glow by Raven Kennedy I have been loving the uh, Plated Prisoner series um, I adore Oren um, I just love how she's grown a lot of people don't get on with Guild uh, which is the first book in the series and I can understand why um, it's definitely not the best book in the series so far for me. Book three is the best series. And I think because uh, Raven Kennedy has been growing Aura as um, Auron as she goes through the books, uh, then the story has been getting much, much better. So I'm looking forward to uh, picking this one up. This is probably one of the ones that I'm going to read regardless of what happens in March. Um because I really need to, I really need to go on with it. I want to know, um, 
yeah the the third book kind of ended on not a cliffhanger but on a real oh my god where does Orin go from here um and I really I really need to I really need to know so I just cannot wait um to pick this one up and it deserves to not wait any longer the next book is actually a March release book um and it is the second book in a series that I recently started. This book is The Games We Play by S. Cole. This is a motorcycle club romance novel, slightly darker than what um, Scarlet Cole, S. Cole has written in the past. I really enjoyed The Sins We Hide, which was book one. So yes, I have pre-ordered um, book two. Book two doesn't count towards my book buying ban because it's the next book in a series and I'm allowed to buy the next book in a series. Um, so yes, definitely want to get that one read as well because it's um, it revisits a character that we met in the first book um, who is outside of the club. Uh, and I really want to know um, how she handles uh, the dynamic um, being because we know what her background is. So. I'm really looking forward to reading it and again like Glow it's probably going to be picked up as soon as I have it in my hands. The next book is one that I've put off reading specifically because I knew there was another round of a Final Book Support Group coming along and that is Final Offer by Lauren Asher. This is the third and final book in her Dreamland Billionaire series. Um, it's based around three brothers who are set to inherit um, Dreamland which is a made-up version of Disneyland and it's their grandfather who is leaving it to them has set them challenges each of them challenges that they have to fulfill to be able to claim their inheritance so this is book three it's the final book the final brother um, do does he do what he's been tasked to do uh, it's second chance romance I love a second chance romance um, so I'm looking forward to picking it up. I really had to keep my fingers off of it um, because it's on my Kindle ready to go and I really had to, to stop myself from, from picking it up um, because I just really want to finish the series. I want to know, you know, to, how, because to, there's, uh, there's another storyline going on as well with their father and I just want to know how that all plays out. And uh, yeah, I have a feeling this might be the most volatile with their father's relationship of the three so yeah i'm looking forward to to this one as well the next book is another continuation of a series that i've started recently um so again it doesn't count because i it's a series continuation that i've had to go and purchase this book or not i've borrowed it from kindle unlimited actually um but that is a company of fiends by Catherine moon this is extremely spicy romance um this is definitely not safe for work romance. This is definitely not safe for reading around your kids romance. This is definitely not safe for reading if you get embarrassed in front of other people romance. Um, it's it's hot. Uh, it's spicy. Uh, it is um, part of the Tempting Monsters series. Now there is a novella out in this series as well, um, however it's a side story, companion story to the main series rather than actually part of it. So I'm only counting this one for Final Book Support Group. It will continue partly the storyline, the plot line that was started in the first book, um, but it's different characters. I'm not sure if uh, the previous characters come into it, they may be um, on the sidelines. But definitely looking for it. If it is if it is as as hot as the first book, um, I'm definitely looking forward to picking this up and reading it. Um, yeah, it's one that I need to read when I'm at home on my own. The penultimate book on the list is Equinox by Christian Cantrell. This is science fiction. Um, duology that I started many years ago, the first book being Containment. Uh, the first book is set on um, a space station. Um, and when one of the members of the space station falls pregnant unplanned, um, things happen um, and there are twists along the way. And 
this book from the way the blurb reads the synopsis reads this isn't an actual continuation of the original story um it might be different characters but it does follow on from the twist that happened at the end of the story so yeah we'll um i'm i'm i kind of i've been intrigued by it because kind of images i've said before i don't get images from books when i'm reading but containment was one of those books that i had certain flashes of images and could imagine certain sections of it happening and playing it out in my mind as it happened um so it has stayed with me and i have been wanting to read equinox i'm just very very rarely in a sci-fi mood um it's not something it's not a go-to genre for me so i do have to intentionally sit down and read science fiction um but maybe 2023 is the year of reading this book and finding out how it all played out the final book on the list is rendezvous with yesterday by diane duval um this was a medieval um paranormal supernatural romance novel setting the first one however in this one it seems that a woman is pulled from present day to medieval past um and into a world that she's completely has no idea about and no idea how to survive uh and it's about how she falls in love um i'm not sure if it follows if with a character from the first book um i don't really remember the characters from the first book i kind of only remember the book cover uh but yes again it's another one that i've been willing to read for a long time it's the only book that's out in the series so far i don't know if the author ever has any intention to go back to it but it would just be nice that you know if if this is it it would just be nice to actually say you know what that's another one done our market is complete if the author revisits i'll reopen it as a series to be in progress so those were all the books that might find a place in my reading in march are you going to take part in final book support group if you are let me know uh, i will try and link steph down below because um and her actual tbr video herself um about final book support group because there is a Dis discord channel as well um we where we give each other encouragement and there'll be announcements um she does re she'll do reading sprints as well throughout the month um just to try and help each other along so come and join us um you know let me let me know if you're going to take part let me know what books you're going to be reading if you do um are you a serial series starter um but don't ever get around to finishing them come and join us please do uh, everybody is welcome i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have then please give it a like and if you're not already then subscribe to the channel and i look forward to seeing you in my next video bye